Hi everyone and welcome to Emergination. Um, my name is Susanna Westwood, I'm the CEO and founder of Emergination. Um, we're here today on our third workshop, which I'm so, so excited about. Thank you so much for coming to join us. We really, really appreciate you taking the time. And as always, this is your time to get focused on your career, really focus on what you want to do. Um, you know, take that time out to actually go, I actually want to get somewhere with my music career. So today the focus is on the music industry. We've got a great guest, um, which I will introduce to you in a short, short while. Um, and that we're going to be live here today to actually answer your questions. So please feel free to tweet in. So it's at, um, at Emergination or you can Facebook us and any messages or any questions that you have either to me or to our guest about Emergination, please feel free to message in. And Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash Emergination. So hopefully you'll be able to kind of get in, get your questions answered if you've got anything about the music industry. So we're here today, first and foremost, in the Warsaw Studio School with a great team of people who are helping us. And we're actually getting a lot of students and graduates who are actually coming to help, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really thankful to them today. So that's the first and foremost. But before I carry on, and before I carry on gossiping and we talk to um, Paul, uh, just to kind of let you know, Emergination is live. So if you've had an email with a code, which should have gone out at eight o'clock last week, which is very exciting. Some guys have signed up. We've had a great response from you guys. We've had lots of emails in, which is great. If you haven't put your profile on yet, guys, I would suggest that you try and do that as quick as possible because the places will run out very quickly. So make sure that you go onto Emergination.com, register, put your code in, and then you can actually get access, put a profile up. And what's going to be great is our industry professionals are on board to actually look at your stuff and actually see what you've got on there. So they can come and actually see who you are and look at your profile, look at your music, look at your art, whatever it is that you're selling, and actually look and take sort of an interest in what's happening with the emerging artists. So this is a way that you can get your stuff out there. All right, so hopefully that's really helpful. If you have any questions, please email us at info at imagination.com and we can answer any queries that you have. So I'm very excited because I get to talk, not just interview, but I get to talk to one of my closest friends, Mr. Paul Reed. Hi, Hi. how are Hi, you doing? Yeah. Oh well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I good. know you're not liking me right now because I'm making you talk. And Paul is used to um, being behind a guitar, I should say. Yeah, in the background. Yeah, so you, this is like your worst nightmare. It definitely is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know. It's all good. It's all good. It's all about. It's all about helping. It's only because it's you. So I know. You I know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That's all right. So first and foremost, what we're going to do is we're just going to probably just talk about your experience of being a session professional session musician. Okay. Um, we just want to kind of find out a bit about who you are. I know I've got a couple of questions, and mm -hmm. some of the guys have already been questioning, um, sent some questions in, and obviously they're going to be tweeting and Facebook, and so be prepared for a lot of questions. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right. So first and foremost, really, we just want to hear about you know your experience, how you became a professional session musician, because I know you've toured all over the world, which has been, and that I love hearing about your story. So, yeah, do you want to just kind of start from the beginning of how it all happened and who you've worked with and what you do and okay, that kind well, of stuff? Well, I guess if you want to go right back to the beginning, okay. well, you know. not quite the beginning, <laughs> but, you know, just a bit. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of, you know, I started off playing basically in church, really. And, um, you know, my, my biggest thing at that time um, was just to be on the church worship band, yeah. you know, yeah. and I remember I remember watching the other musicians and being just like in awe of them, you know, because they could, you know, put songs together and, and perform every Sunday. And I was just waiting for my time, yeah. you know, and obviously, you know, things transpired and like, I went on to the, the worship band and I started playing and it was all good, you know. Um, I started off as a drummer. I actually didn't know that, seriously. Yeah, I actually started <laughs> no off playing way. drums. Okay. And, you know, it was something that I always wanted to do. You know, yeah. just I just wanted to play drums. And uh, my father became a minister in church and he got transferred to, an, to another church in a different area. And, uh, you know, he promised to buy me a drum kit for my birthday. And instead, he just he brought me a guitar. He says, well, go to the shops, I'm going to buy you a guitar. I'm like, oh, I want a, <laughs> a drum kit. But there's no music in church. So, you know, it was kind of like, well, I need you to learn to play the guitar so we can have some kind of music in church. And I was gutted. I really was. But I had a guitar sitting down for months, not doing anything as yeah. you do. 
And I don't know, just one day I just picked it up and uh, I found that it was actually quite easy for me to learn to play, you know, That's and um, it just kind of developed from there. Um, I started getting better at what I did via practice and stuff and, um, uh, you know, people were kind of asking me to come and, you know, play in their band. We had a lot, we had a lot of bands in our school and around the area that we lived, you know, was, you know, everybody was into music then, into playing live music, which That's was awesome. great, you know. And, um, you know, I got the opportunity to play with a few different people and like slowly I was getting better and better, you know, my desire to play, you know, and, you know, perform was getting more and more intense, you know, and I, I remember, you know, sitting watching, you know, Top of the Pops back in the day, you know, for some oh, of you out there. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of people out there that know what yeah. Top of the Pops is. And, you know, back then there was a lot of, you know, musical programmes on TV. Mm. And, you know, I remember watching those things and thinking, oh, God, I, I really would love to be doing that as a career, you know, yeah. and um, not thinking that, you know, way down the line, you know, it's, it's actually happened for me, you know. And, I, and also, you know, just kind of watching artists, you know, on, on that show and thinking, God, I'd love what I would do to play with Prince or what I would do to play with I this like person or that person. Yeah. And, you know, not knowing that later on in, down the line, it actually happens, you know. And um, I feel very fortunate in the fact that I'm able to do what I do for a career. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, I, I got introduced into the session scene by a guitarist friend of mine, he was already doing it. Mm. Um, he was based in London and he would call me for, for gigs. He'd be like, look, I can't do this gig. Can you come down and cover me? He'd be like, yeah, no problem. Come down and cover him. These were like regular kind of, you know, commercial gigs that you do, you know, yeah. singing at a yeah. wedding or yeah. whatever. And, you know, s you know, surely, you know, along the line, he got me to come and depth for him on a, a proper gig, what yeah. I call a proper gig, yeah. which is a pop gig. He says, look, I'm on tour. I've been given this, you know, contact. They want me to play for a girl called Michelle Gale, but I can't do it. Are you around? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and Michelle Gale, she was quite famous at the time. She, she was, was, yeah. yeah. I remember Michelle Gale. Yeah, because she was like doing these stand Yeah, I'm with you. Are you going for, <laughs> do a performance now? No. <laughs> Well, anyway, she uh, she needed a guitarist, and um, I went down. I didn't have to do an audition or anything. That's awesome. It was sure it was just based well, on recommendation, yeah. you know, and what the guy knew about me as a musician. And I went down. I did the session, and it was fine. I had a great time. I ended up working with Michelle for you know a good six seven months, and it was from then I started networking and meeting different people. Mm -hmm. People begin began to know who I was, you know, suddenly I was, you know, not just this guy from Birmingham, but I was part of, you know, the session scene, if you want to call That's it that, okay. in London. And, um, you know, I, f through that, other things kind of developed and, you know, you start working with different artists, mm -hmm. you know, based on your experiences and based on, you know, you know, people, people see you People see you working with such and such artists and you do a great job mm. and they'll recommend you to do something else. That's true. You know, but um, that was my kind of beginning into the session scene. It's amazing yeah. just to hear, sorry to interrupt, but it's to hear you talk about, like, it, it, it's about not only you being really good at what you do, because obviously you'd, at that point you'd proven yourself to this guy who was kind of giving you work, mm. basically, that you were excellent at what you did in the sense of you know your craft. But then because you had this professional a attitude mm. and you just went and did stuff and you, in some ways you were faithful with the small stuff mm. in the small gigs and you just treated them from Absolutely. what I can hear, you know, Absolutely. and that's what got, got you the next step in. Is, Absolutely. That, is that correct? Well, Absolutely. And, and while you're on that point, I mean, those, those little gigs that I started off doing, I still do to today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're not, they're things that I would never throw away because yeah. they were the stepping stone for, you know, for me moving on to the bigger things, yeah. you know. Uh, that's one, one thing, one word of advice I'd give to people, playing as, different, as many different musical situations as you can, yeah. because that's how you grow, that's how you learn your craft. You learn how to interact with all the members of the band, you know, and that's how you develop your style and your sound, you know. And 
And I think a lot of those experiences for me, because, you know, I'd be playing for, you know, a rock band one week, you know, next week I'll be playing for a Motown band, you know, next week I'll be playing for a pop cover band, you know, so you get in all those different styles of music, you know, and you can draw upon them experiences when you're called into a professional game, you know, so when a pop artist asks you to come in, and you're doing a session. It might be in a studio session, yeah. for instance. I'll never forget, I was called in to do a reggae session. Now, I thought I knew what reggae was. Of course. You know, <laughs> be, you know. Yeah, you've got to get there. Yeah. <laughs> be Jamaican. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I, tell you, I rocked up to the studio and um, the guy played the track for me. And uh, says, he goes, right, all I want you to do is just, all I want you to do is just, ja, ja, such and such. And I was like, okay. But I started putting my ver- what I thought was reggae, yeah. and the guy was just like, "That's not reggae. What are you doing?" You know, obviously someone has recommended me to do this job, yeah. and like I've come in there, and it's not the right thing. And he, you know, he stood there and he actually schooled me in how to play reggae. Oh my gosh! It was the most embarrassing thing, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a, it was a great lesson for me because it taught me to a, you know, my job as a session musician is to kind of interpret music do you know what I mean so if if you call me to do a session I've got to be able to deliver you know whatever it is that you're looking for from me you know and um, I came out of that session knowing how to play reggae well that's a bonus you know it is a bonus (laughs) but you know fortunately it was with a producer who you know kind of liked me and he was willing to kind of share that information you know because Another producer just says, get this guy out of here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, you'd walk out as well with your reputation as well yeah, that's in true. pieces. So it's, it's really important that you kind of um, uh, learn as many different styles of music as possible. Mm-hmm. So you're able to kind of deliver. You know, uh, you, know you, you don't have to be a master of any one particular genre. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not a master of country music. But I know the elements of country music in terms of guitar, what what the sound, what it's supposed to sound like, the kind of riffs that you know work in that genre. So if someone asked me to play, you know what I mean? I've got something to offer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, <clears throat> and that's the point, really. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really good. Mm. I love this. I love learning some good <laughs> stuff. It's good stuff. So in regards to sort of like the development of your career, obviously you started out with Michelle Gale and, yep. and then obviously things developed. How did you, we, well, a lot of the guys should know this, but um, obviously you're the main musical director really for Beverly and I on you and you do a lot of the session stuff for her. Mm-hmm. How did that come about and, you know, what, what well, was that? Again, situation. that was that was a recommendation by the really? same guy that recommended me to Michelle. Recommendation's a key, then. <laughs> it definitely is a key. It definitely yeah. is a key. And I mean, like, so this guy used to he used to call me to do a lot of gigs, yeah. but um, Beverly Knight thing. When Beverly Knight first came out. She was just like, "Who's this girl? She's amazing." Mm. And it was it was like in the industry, it was like everybody wants to play for Beverly Knight mm. because she's seen as a really, you know. An amazing musical artist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's not she's just not, a singer, is she? She's 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 everything. a she's a singer, singer. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I've I've seen her move even the greatest singers to tears. That's awesome. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking like Stevie Wonders of this world. You mm-hmm. know, your Shaka Khan's of this world. You know that in awe of Beverly. That's awesome. You know, and it, it, for me, it's a pleasure to work with somebody like that. You know. But um, I was recommended by this guy, and uh, it was only to do one show. And I did one show, and I came off stage, and they were like, "Look, Beth's going on tour in the next couple of weeks, uh, well, next couple of months, and um, we'd like you to do the tour." And I was like, "Well, I don't think I can do it. You know, I'm just I'm just coming here yeah. just to do a quick, you know, job, and I can't I can't do it." So I was speak to whoever I won't mention the name in case yeah. he's watching <laughs> and okay. um, if it's cool with him it's cool with me yeah you know anyway I spoke to him and uh, he said it's fine he rang oh. me he said everything's cool but then he stopped calling me for shows <laughs> he stopped calling me yeah, I recommended stole. me stuff you stole his gig I stole his gig according <laughs> to him but you know okay. you're just doing a job at yeah, the end of the day true. you know and um, you just heed the call you know but again recommendations are great you know but if I'm going to recommend you to do a session for me, you know, you're in some ways, you, you, my reputation's on the line. Total. Do you know what Seems I mean? Like so it's it's up to you to kind of deliver, yeah. you know, on my behalf. Otherwise, no one's going to ask me to recommend anybody again. Well, they're not going to trust you. They're not going to trust me <laughs> no. for a start. 
but true. you know, recommend it. When someone recommends you to do a gig, you know, you, you go the extra mile. Yeah. You go the extra mile, you know, and, and, and for me, that's what I did, you know, I made sure I turn up, I turn up to, you know, the session, knowing what I'm supposed to do, being prepared, having the right equipment, yeah. you know. It's amazing how many musicians don't turn up with all those little things, you're like, really? Go oh yeah, it's, and that's an important point, really, whether it's a studio session or a live session, you don't be rocking up to a session with guitars that won't stay in tune. Mm. or not having the batteries for your tuner pedal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or if you break a string, you haven't got a set of strings, mm. you know. And, and, and I say all these things because I've been guilty of it. Yeah, I've you learn the hard way. I've learned the hard way. Yeah. I've learned the hard way. I, I remember my very first studio session was with uh, a producer friend of mine and he, he was producing an artist and uh, they had the budget to go and use Abbey Road Studios. Nice. Now, Abbey Road Studios, for, you know, well, everybody knows Abbey Road. It's yeah. the most famous studio. Everybody wants to do at least right. one session there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I spent five minutes just going to and fro on the zebra crossing out of the front <laughs> before I went so inside. So did you have photos? <laughs> no, I didn't. You I didn't have photos. Come on, Paul. So I know. Fun. I'm so behind. Like <laughs> you that. really are. But um, I remember we went into the studio and he says, look, you're going to need an acoustic guitar. So just bring an acoustic. I didn't have an acoustic guitar. I didn't have one. You know, so I rang my friend. I said, have you got an acoustic guitar? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got one. You can borrow it. I like, grabbed it. I didn't even look at this thing. Oh, no. I just rocked up in the studio. The first time I saw it was when I sat down in the studio. And you've got to imagine this. The artist was there. The I'm producer just was be there. Horrified now. The record boss was there. And the engineers are there as well, and like, they're all sitting down, and like, they played me in a track and says, right, this is what we want, we want you to play this rhythm, and then we want you to double track it and do this, and I'm like, okay, fine. Okay, all right, if you get your guitar, we'll set it off. <laughs> so, take this guitar out, unzip it, and then like, I pull, pull the guitar out, and like, I could see like, the strings straight away, just caked in sweat. You know, and just dirt so and sick. grimy, <laughs> and I was like, "This is this is not going to go very well." So you know, I had a look at the guitar, and uh, it didn't even have a name. Really, it did not have a name. You know, and it was just like a, a stillness in the room. You know, where, and I just know that everybody else was just like, "This is unbelievable." So anyway, we plugged it in, and it sounded worse than it looked. You know, I was oh, trying to man. tune it off and it just was not working. Anyway, the, the executive producer happened to walk into the room and, um, <clears throat> you know, I was asking how it was going and I managed to put some guitar down. And he says, um, I like the parts and everything, but the guitar sounds absolutely atrocious. Yeah. And, you know, my heart just sank, my heart just sank. And mm. he says, oh, hang on there. And he went upstairs and he came back down with this beautiful Taylor guitar. Yeah. It says like, yeah, use this one, see if this works. So we used the guitar, sounded incredible. Did the recording and it was fine. Went home and I got a phone call from my friend who called me into the session, a producer friend of mine. And he, he just gave me a proper dressing down. Yeah. He says, Paul, don't you ever, ever turn up to a studio yeah. with equipment that doesn't work. See, although this is like a story, these are huge lessons that you've obviously had to yeah. learn. And you know, many musicians, whether you're a singer or an artist or, you know, guitarist, drummer, whatever, it's these important things that are like so huge. And mm. it's like, I know you've had to go, and I think we all have to go through it. I think I can look back at some of the stuff that I've done and gone, oh my goodness. Yeah. And you have those experiences and you never, ever yeah. do them again. Like you never make that same mistake twice. But, you know, you know, the part of this session is that even just by hearing your stories, learn from these examples. You've got to learn don't, from it, don't, you know. So yeah. I mean, like anyone that's listening to this show now, yeah. you won't do, you won't make that mistake because yeah. you've heard from me. It's do you know what I mean? Situation so, to you, begin. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Yeah. But you know, be be professional. You've been a professional musician, so you're often a professional service. Mm. So you know your equipment's got to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no excuses. And back then, I mean, like, studio time was expensive. Yeah. You know, you could be paying, like, £500 an hour. You know, no one wants to be sitting around waiting for you to tune your guitar up for two, 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Because time is money. It's true. It's so true. You know, so, you you know, when you're called to do a session, you're, you're called to provide a solution. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're called because I can't do it. So, yeah. That's your job, yeah. do you know what I mean? So don't be asking me, oh, how do you play that chord? 
I don't know. I've called you. Yeah. Do you understand? So know know what it, what your art is and what Absolutely. you're supposed to be doing. I love it. This is yeah. so good. This is so 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 good. So in regards to people getting a taste of what's it like to be on tour? You know, some of these guys are just starting out. They're just mm. starting out as musicians and artists. You know, it could be both fields that you, you know, you, you just want to know what it feels like. And they they go to the shows and obviously you see people on stage and mm -hmm. we've all had experiences of like something of being on stage, but you know, really give us the ins and outs of what's it like being on tour. I know there's some good parts and some bad parts, but, you know, give us the, what's, what does it feel like? You know, what are the pros to being on tour? Obviously, I know you get to do what you love and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but... You know. For me, I love being on tour. Is it your favourite thing? Um, yes, it is, I think. Really? Yeah, okay. because for me, it's, it's a holiday. Do you know what I mean? I can get away. <laughs> That's not how you promote it. It's worth it. No, go on. <laughs> It is definitely where, but touring, it's, I mean, like, if you're, if you're a musician that enjoys live music, there's yeah. nothing better than touring, yeah. because you, you know, you, you, you're getting to play in front of an audience, and you're getting an immediate response from an audience, yeah. and, uh, I mean, the touring part, where I say it's, it's a holiday, because most of the hard work is before the tour, yeah. do you know what I mean, it's preparing, it's rehearsing, you know, it's making sure you've got right sounds it's making sure you know all the routines are down do you know what I mean yeah, and so when you when you actually go on tour after you've got through the first couple of shows yeah. and you know everything works and you're playing you're playing everything right and it's sounding great you, you begin to enjoy it then yeah, do you know what I mean and it, you can kind of like not overly relax because you know every day you know for two hours you've got to be on your game yeah. you've got to be professional and deliver a show because that's what it's about that's what people are paying their money for yeah you know but it um as i said the hardest part is the preparation really you know yeah and i mean like for me in terms of being the music director it's it it's more stressful in the sense that you know mm. you, you, you're responsible for the musical direction of that show. Yeah. You know, and like fortunately or unfortunately, you know, there's been times where you work with some artists who know exactly what they want. Yeah. Or they'll have a show producer who knows, right, we want this, we want that, we want a little musical interlude there, we want a musical interlude there, we want a big introduction. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. know exactly what it is. And you've just got to be flexible enough to deliver yeah. what it is they're looking for. You have other artists now who's like, well, I don't really know. Really? I don't really know. Now, I, I, I would put Beverly in that category to a degree yeah. because, you know, Bev, Bev's very trusting yeah. where I'm concerned. I you've think, got the relationship. You've been yeah. working together for a long time, haven't you? Absolutely. So it, that's probably why, in that sense, she trusts you. Yeah, she trusts do. me. She trusts me. But, you know, if, if something ain't quite right or doesn't sit right with that, she'll okay. say. Yeah. Good. You know, yeah. and, you know, you've got to be you've got to be um, okay with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. like, don't be kind of, well, this is my idea and it has to stay. No, Can it's not. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. You've got to take your yourself out of the equation. It's yeah. not about you. You know, you could be the best musician in the world. You know, you could shred for days, you know, but it doesn't matter. You know, your job is to interpret that artist's music. Mm. You know, it's not to change it or remix it because you feel like, oh, I could have done it better than that. No, yeah. that's not your job. You know, unless they've asked you to do that, yeah. then that's different. You know. That's true. That's, mm. I think that's something that you do really well, like just even seeing you play, just, just so subtle. And, and always when you've done gigs, the feedback that I've got from people is like, oh, he just really interprets the music really well. Yeah. And you're really sensitive to what yeah. people want, which is absolutely, like, it's key. And mm -hmm. you might have a guitarist, no offense to all guitarists here, but <laughs> you sit in a rehearsal room and they're just sitting there twiddling for like, hours and you just yeah. want to shut up it's like literally there is just none yeah. of that with these guys which is awesome so yeah. it's cool so in regards to your career and you look back and um, we're going to go on to some tips and helpful things in a bit but what's the biggest highlight for you what was your main thing that you think oh my gosh absolute pinnacle of my career uh, like there's been so many do you know give us a handful then there's been a th this <laughs> i knew you were going to say that <laughs> you know me i'm like <laughs> Well, There's been a few. I mean, like you know, I've been I've been very fortunate to you know to play on some of the biggest stages you know around the world and in, in the UK. You know, mm. as I said, you know, I remember watching Live Aid. You know, back in 
80, whatever it was, and thinking, yeah, before <laughs> before a lot of you were born. Probably. <laughs> but I, you know, Wembley Stadium, mm. the, the old Wembley Stadium. Yeah. It was just like, man, what I would do to play on that stage, not knowing that years down the line, it actually happened. What did that feel like the first time you stepped out? Just, just so we know, because this is just, it's just awesome. Yeah, it's just awesome. And sometimes you, you kind of pinching yourself to is this really happening? Yeah. You know, and I, I've, I've always, this is one thing, let me rewind. Always set goals for yourself. Always kind of know this is where, this is where I'm, I am now. I love you right now because that's what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. So Fantastic. go on, please do it. It's, it's massive. It's massive because mm. it's the only way that you can gauge where you're actually at. Yeah. You know, because you start off. You start off not exactly knowing what you want to do, but you have an idea of where you want to be in 10 years' time, what you want to be doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because along the way, you can gauge whether you're heading in the right direction or you're not. You know, and I, I remember saying to myself, I want to play with the biggest artists in the world, That's on the awesome. biggest stages in the world, whoever that artist might be at that time. Yeah. You know, not knowing that, you know, I'd be, sit, I'd be on stage at the NEC supporting Car um, Carlos Santana. That's awesome. He's one of my favourite guitarists. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, being on stage, looking down the crowd and seeing Carlos Santana looking at me, mm. and watching me playing, and I'll be like, oh, oh no. Do you <laughs> know what? I love this. Do you know what I love even more so? Because you never talk. And this is one thing I love about, I have to say, and I will say this. One thing I really love about Paul is that you can never find out this stuff because he never tells you and you never boast. Like, I remember we've had so many conversations. I've gone, oh, you know, tell me about yeah. this. And there's so many rich stuff that I learn every Did time I, I talk to you. No. So oh, I've heard I'm about, sorry. like, the Prince one, which is what I was really... Oh, oh like, that's oh. coming. That okay. one's coming. Sorry, a bit of a sneak preview. But... Like, uh, what I love about you, and this is probably a, a character thing, that is that you ne I never see you boast. And you, out of anyone I know, could have that position to do that in regards to where you've been and what you've done and who you've worked with. Mm. And it's that humility that I love that comes with you because you're professional at what you do. But this is just my little side thing, but, you know, that's, yeah. I just wanted to say that because the amount of times you work with some musicians and they pipe on about, oh, I've worked with such and such and what you... And it's the ones that are like trying too hard that kind of mm. you just go oh my goodness please just be quiet you know yeah. really well, well, not I'm in a harsh way but yeah i'm yeah. the same do you know what i mean it's like you could be the most incredible musician you know but because you've got such a big head on you, mm. do you your musicality doesn't even matter anymore do you know what yeah. i mean so like people don't necessarily buy into what you can do as an artist or as a player or as a musician or as a dancer, but they're buying, they're, they're buying into you. Yeah, that's so you true. You know what I mean? It's that like so going back to the whole touring thing. Mm. You know, if you're not a great person, no one's going to want to be on tour with you for three months. Yeah. They're just not going to. Yeah. They'd rather take someone who's got a lesser ability, but it's going to bring a vibe and can have a laugh with. Because yes, you, yes. when you're on tour, you, it's like you're in a, you're, it's a mini lifetime in a way. Because you could be away for three weeks and it feels like, feels shorter than that to us, yeah. you know. But our families, it's like, oh, you've been away for ages, where yeah. you been? You know, yeah. but it's a mini lifetime. So your people you go on tour with, it, it becomes family. Yeah. It becomes family. That's so really like, cool. you do watch out for each other, you look out for each other. But if you're a bit of a... Yeah. yeah let's, let's, <laughs> not say the word, because yeah. we're on camera. If you're a bit of a head case, <laughs> yeah. you know, or not a kind of person that people like, then it's, you know... It's well, you're not going to get booked again, are you, really? No. Basically, that's not what happens. Not at all. But anyway, go back to Carlos Santana. Yeah, because <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah, go see, the uh, next day at the next show, we are uh, kind of, when we walked in, he was walking to his studio and like, he goes, hey, man. Hey, man. I was like, oh, hi. I was like, gosh, Carlos <laughs> Santana's talking to us. No, I'm pretty from myself. And he says, oh, it's great play. Great play last that's night. Awesome. I sat and watched you. And I says, yeah, I, I saw you. I says, you always put me off in my game. Yeah. And he goes, no, you did a great job. And listen, hey, you know, we have, I always have two amps set up on stage. Feel free to come and join me on stage oh, tonight. Hi. You know, and I was like, really? Because, yeah, absolutely. Just come. Anytime you want to come on stage, just come and let, let my manager know and you can come on. I was like, I bottled it. I didn't do you it. You didn't? I didn't oh do it. Oh, my God. I just didn't do it. I just, and to this day, it's like, what What was I thinking? I should have done it. You but, said should have done Yeah. But it was good enough to... You know, that recommendation. Get that thing. recommendation. Yeah, that's cool. And so. uh, you know, the other, yeah. the other major thing was being on stage with Prince. That is awesome. And actually playing you. with Prince. You know, for a lot of guys, I don't know, some people out there will probably know who the hell's Prince. 
but you know, for most musicians, he's like, yeah. he, he's the musician's musician. Yeah. You know, and it, it just it just came across by chance, to be honest. You know, because we were doing the support thing for him a few years ago. He was doing Twenty One Nights at the O2, mm. and we did support. And again, he watched our performance, our meaning Beverly Nights performance, and he was just amazed by it. Just amazed amazing. by it, and he's like. Listen, guys, I really want you to come and play at my after show party. You know, thinking that we were just going to be the entertainment. Yeah. You know, we went up there and we, you know, we did an hour, you know, just jamming. That's just awesome. jamming. We didn't have anything prepared, just jammed. And then the next thing we knew, he his band were like joining us on stage. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. You know, and then the next minute you could see Prince in the sidelines tuning off his guitar. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so cool. Go on. Oh my gosh, and then he joins us on stage and then it just all goes off. Oh. And my claim to fame really is that I always tell people, well, I am Deed Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like we, we were playing That's one so of funny. we were playing one of Beverly Knight's songs. Yeah. He says, Yeah, I want to play that song, that song. So we did the song and um, he di obviously didn't know the chord changes and stuff like that. And he was looking over at me and I was like, yeah, C sharp. <laughs> Can't believe you told Prince what to do. That's so <laughs> totally flipping what cool. To do. So that, that's my that's my claim to fame. That's no, awesome. MD Prince. But, but go on, sorry. Yeah, but that to me that was that was that was the highlight. One of the highlights, you know, amongst many. Yeah. You, uh, what I love, what I really am loving, is I look at you and okay, we hear the Birmingham accent, we hear the local lad, yep. and you really are like a lad started playing in church. Yep. And literally, you had big dreams, and yep. and that's the whole purpose of this, you know, with imagination that, you know. I think we're so told not to be inspired and not to have big dreams and not to actually believe in ourselves. And I love this story because with you, Paul, it's, it's the proof that actually, no matter mm -hmm. where you come from or what you do, preacher's son, so to speak, you know, little, I saw some photos, you were a little with a oh, snapper. It's not good. <laughs> but you know, and it's like, you have these big dreams and they can actually happen with the hard work and the application and, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what this time is about. That, you know, we don't just you don't just let it pass you by. That you actually see your dreams and go right. Let's let's mm. do something about it and not just say oh well next year maybe. But no now you know. Absolutely, this is another point. You know, because because well you know you know mm. I've I've over the years I've had this thing of you know not being overly confident in mm. what I do, my own ability. Totally. Do you know what I mean? It's only when I hear other people saying, man, you're an amazing guitarist, you know. Yeah. You know, and it, 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 it take, took me a while to kind of be at one with that, to accept it, do you know what I mean? Because, you know, growing up, I used to listen to other session musicians, you know, I'd read about, you know, certain musicians on the back of a, you know, album sleeve and I'd be like, man, this guy's playing on everything, yeah. you know, and, I'm, and I'd always try and work out, well, why is it he gets called to do all these sessions and not somebody else? Mm. But then I realised he's got his own sound, yeah. he's got his own style, you know, and like, it, there was this, this saxophone player called um, David Stat Sanborn and I remember watching Live Aid again and I was listening to it and I was like, I can hear Dave Sanborn in that brass section. Cause he just stood out, he's got a sound that is just so unique to him. Yeah. And I was like, cameras, just please pan across to the to see. <laughs> to see who's playing on the horn section. And there he was. That's you awesome. know, and I, and that was a big lesson for me because it kind of taught me you've got to have you your own sound, something that that differentiates you from the next guy. You know, there's nothing special about me. You know, I'm not like a virtuoso musician, but I've got a sound mm. and I've got a style which people are like, right, we need certain, what is it we need? We need Reedy. Reedy knows that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the sound we yeah. need. And then like, I'll go and do the session and, be, and they'll be like, yeah, we just knew you were the right person for this. That's awesome. And that's a testament, you know, when someone can say that to you as an artist, that means you, it's job done, mm. you know, and it's, it's about branding. You know what I mean? It's like Cadbury's is going to taste like Cadbury's. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you you've got you've got your own sound. It does what it says on the tin. Yeah. You know, and that's why I can walk into a room with all the guitarists like Carlos Santana mm. and not feel intimidated. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not trying to be like Carlos Santana. Yeah. I'm not trying to be like that guy who can shred for hours. I can't. I don't do that. That's yeah. not me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I can groove. I can pocket you're, like you're a little funky. Paul Reed. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But and and I'm I'm confident in that. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I'll stick to what I can do, you know, and, and, and it's, it, there's nothing wrong with, you know, saying if somebody asks you to do something, there's nothing wrong with saying, no, I can't, I don't think I can do that. Yeah. You know, I'm, and th that's another lesson I learned. I got a call to, to go on tour with Vanessa May. Um, Vanessa May is like this virtuoso classical yeah. violinist. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't even know that. I just heard the name. I was like, oh, yeah, she's famous. Yeah. I saw her on TV the other day. I got the phone call, it was like Thursday evening, and the guy says, look, our guitarist has let us down, we're going on tour next week, Monday, we've already rehearsed, we need someone to come in and just like, do this tour for us, I'm like, yeah, fine, I'll do it, yeah, 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 you know, tour of America, or wherever Wicked. it was, like, yeah, I just wanted to get out on tour, anyway, I walked, I, went, I thought, look, right, let's get the music together, I went to the shops, brought a couple of her albums, and went back home, I started playing the albums, and I was like, Oh, this is classical. I don't do classical. Yeah. I thought, okay, let me play the next track. Same again, and like every track, it was just getting more and more intense. And like, I, I just realised I'm not going to do this gig any justice. Yeah. And you know, it was my professionalism, in my opinion. Yeah. I just had to ring them and say, look, I'm really sorry about this, but I don't think I'm going to do this gig justice. But then I recommended somebody else yeah, who, who I knew that fits their style, and they did the job. And it's fine, that. you know. Yes. So sometimes you have to be honest with yourself, you know, because you've got to protect your your brand and yeah. protect your reputation. And that's key, isn't mm. it? Really, the reputation, because it is about who you know, and the business is about, is about networking. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it's it's frustration when you're trying to get your foot in the door mm -hmm. for some of the emerging artists, you know, whether singer, musicians, whatever it is your thing. It's mm -hmm. it's frustrating, but once you do, and when you develop all those qualities that you're saying, it's like. Yeah. You've got to protect your reputation, you and it's what, like you say, products we would call branding. It's yep. their image. It's you know, mm -hmm. you know. I, I get that. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a bit more kind of yep. top tips questions and yep. kind of get into a bit of sort of knowledge to really help. I mean, we've had a lot of advice already come through, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people will be able to see that you've given uh, such great help. Anyway, just from hearing your experiences. But yeah. okay, we kind of talked a bit about this. But what would you say is the most important skill or quality that a serious, dedicated emerging artist or musician needs to have in order to make it in this industry? What's the the quality or skill? Obviously, I know we've touched on some, but you can just refresh. That's totally fine. So what would you say? Um, I th I'd, again, I'd say you know, having your own individualism yeah do you know what I mean I, th I can't stress that enough because as I said before it separates you it it's 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 the cream that rises to the top at yeah. the end of the day do you know what I mean and it's like if there's something different about you you know you'll probably get the job over the next person yeah. do you know what I mean it might be it might it, it, it could be anything your sound your your look yeah. You know, it's 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 all those things. So be individual. Don't try and be like the other person. You so know. how would on a practical level, how would how do you find that though? And I know it takes time, and that's frustrating for anybody starting out to to really hear because mm. they're like, no, I want it now. But, you know, how how did you find that for yourself? Like, how did it come about? In terms of my music, I you know I I made a point of listening to as different many different kind of genres do you know okay. what I mean so you know if you listen to how I play there's rock in there there's soul there's jazz there's gospel you know there's a there's a whole melting pot of different styles and genres that I kind of draw upon those experiences mm. you know and 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 make into my sound that's awesome you know um, if you're gonna if you're just gonna listen to Stevie Vai all the time mm. you know or you name the, you name the guitarist. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're just going to listen to that, what well, you're going to a be a clone of that person. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it's going to be like, what's the point? It's that person already exists. And it's the same for like singers or it's whoever. Same. Yeah. Yeah. If you just listen to that one person or, or adapt that yeah. one style. Yeah. You don't need it. Yeah. We don't. If need you're another... if you're a dress designer. Yeah. You know, if you're going to design a dress is like it's another fashion design. What's the point? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to stick out. You know, so, you know, I would say that's that's an important thing, skill to have, yeah, you know. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. 
we kind of heard a bit about obviously along the way people who have helped you and been influential in your career but you know who would you say those big inspirations those people that have helped you practically because you know part of imagination which we talked about for the last couple of weeks is that you know we have got a huge pool of industry professionals that are working within the different areas that you know we I realized from my career it's been really important just to have those people to help me basically you know and help me not only as a musician or a singer or a dancer but mm. how to market myself how to you know promote myself how to you know even just get my head right so that mm. I believe in myself those kind of practical things but mm. for you what who are the big sort of influential characters well, for me, I mean, like, th there'd be people you wouldn't even know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like, musicians who, as I say, I grew up listening to, like, in church, for instance. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest advice that I got as a guitarist was from uh, a guitarist that played in church. Really? You know, and he just says, you know, when I was starting out, you know, I was trying to play everything, you know. It was like, you're just, you're playing all the best licks. Yeah. Trying to fit all <laughs> the best. Everything in yeah. one second. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the guy's like, you know, you, you've got a nice sound, you've got a nice touch, but less is more yeah less is more and like that's followed me throughout everything you know when i'm when i'm putting bands together when we're trying to create you know shows and stuff like that it's it's the first thing i think of it's like right let's strip out strip out all of the nonsense yeah. and let's get back to what this is about which is music let's interpret the music first yeah and then we can look about you know adding all the fluff if you like. <laughs> the fluff. All I the love how you put that. All the fluff. Right. That's you know. really cool. But yeah, just, you know, that was one, one of the best pieces of advice I've had. Mm. You know, and, and the other one was going back to that developing your own sound because, yeah. and how I got that piece of advice as well was, you know, you know you, YouTube. Everybody mm. knows YouTube. You know, you can, I, I managed to get access, and Facebook, yeah. I got access to session musicians that I grew up listening to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because and then I realised these guys are regular guys. Yeah. Regular people, regular musicians. You know, they will go and do a gig for like fifty bucks down the road. You know, yeah. in an afternoon, just to make a bit more. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's true. They it's will. True. Do you know what I mean? And um, you know, I remember emailing this guy on Facebook and saying, like, oh, I grew up listening to you. I think you're incredible. How did you get that sound? You know, and um, his name's David T. Walker. This guy, he's got to be like 70 odd now. Really? Amazing, amazing guy. And he, first of all, he wrote me back and he says, I can't believe that you're actually emailing me and asking me an, in an intelligent question like that, he said. <laughs> but, you know, he proceeded to kind of tell me how you develop your voice and you develop your sound. And he gave me great advice. And, like, those are things that you can do you know, at home, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, if you know, you can get access to, you know, musicians that you kind of like, respect, Network email with them, them. Yeah. network with them, talk to them, you know, you just don't know what that conversation can lead to. It's so true. Yeah, it's go really to important. gigs, go to local gigs and meet musicians, you know, and network and, you know, tell them who you are, tell them what you do, you know, invite them to one of your shows. Yeah. You know, and you just don't know. You just don't know that that mm -hmm. little that little bit of networking could like set you on your your yeah. way. I love it. There's so mm. much. I, I'm like, go, we could uh, talk all day. I love this. Love it. So, in regards to, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions which yeah. we've got coming through as well. But, you know, sort of like even if you could give like a couple of top tips of to dos or not to do, because even that with networking, it's like. There's a, t mm. there's a do's and don'ts, isn't there? There's a kind of like, you know, you can get yeah. some that are so eager when you're like, you're like, oh my gosh, get out of my personal space when you're networking yeah. with them. And then, but you yeah. know, what's the do's and don'ts? Just be cool. Just be, you know, don't, don't be kind of like, hey, hi, you know, I'm, I'm Paul Reed. I'm this amazing guitarist. Yeah, you need to check me out. Here's my chat. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Just be, you know, yourself. just be yourself and just be, you know, kind of, you know, be more interested than, mate, you're in a great playing tonight, you know, mm. amazing, like, you know, how did you how did you get to you know how did you get on this gig for yeah, instance how yeah. did you become a musician you know so how did you become a professional you know and one thing people like to talk about themselves do you know what i mean most people yeah. do you know so you will get a lot of information you oh, know nice. but um just be, just be natural there was another point i was going to say but i've just just, just <laughs> totally <laughs> gone out of my head it's because i keep talking i'm sorry yeah. Inter interrupting you but yeah, networking is important, and because um, we're talking about top tips, does that help? Does top that tips, it? yeah. 
practice. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Know your stuff. Don't don't get on stock when you get on a gig, you know, yeah. and somebody asks you to do something and you you can't deliver it, you know, because that's just not the time, you no. know. You the minute you say you're a professional at anything, people are gonna expect you to know to know what's what, you know. So practice, know what you're about, have have the right equipment, turn be punctual, you know. It's be yeah. punctual. You know what I mean? Time is money. I love it. It's better. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, it's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. For the things that really matter. I know. I know. You know. Right, I've just not got any issues now. For the things that really matter, I'm be joking. on time. You know, no one's going to shout at you because you've arrived two hours early no. for a session. Do you know what I mean? But Definitely. what that does as well, it gives you time to like just settle down, have a breather, and prepare have yourself. Have a cup of tea, <laughs> and just be cool. You yeah. know what I mean? The worst thing is when you're running late and you're trying to get on the tube in London, for instance, and everything's running late, there's hold-ups, yeah. and you're arriving at the studio late or arriving at the TV station late or the mm. session, and uh, you're just sweating. You're just not prepared to, to play. Totally. You know what no, I mean? So cool. you, you're flustered. Cool. So I've got a couple of questions yeah. that are coming through um, from some guys that have emailed in, and also I'll check the Twitter and Facebook feed. Um, but first of all, we've got uh, Lucy, who's a... Uh, female session musician which I'm very excited about whoop, whoop. and she asked for some tips because obviously I have to say the music industry is still a little bit more dominated by men not all the time but you know what I'm saying so as a girl you know she's asking sort of like are there any tips or how she should be as a session musician in a man's kind of world <laughs> sounds very bad doesn't it but you know what I mean yeah. so anything that you could apply I, I think I think female musicians is great I, I mean the, the, the few that I know they're, they're incredible, you know, and like the ones that are are out there on the scene, you know, have got there on their own merits yeah. because they can play, you know what I mean. If you if you can if you can ma if you master your instrument and you can deliver a performance, then yeah. d I don't see what the problem is really, you know. Again, it's about networking, it's about presenting yourself, and you know, just being just being ballsy, just getting yeah. out there. Tenacity, you know, I love it. It's tenacity, good. Yeah, it's true. You know, and not feeling intimidated yeah. at all. You know, you know what you can do. You know what you bring to the table, and you just bring it. That's really good. Mm. I love that. Okay, we've got a couple of people tweeting him. So we've got Holly, who's uh, tweeting. She goes, "I'm my worst critic when it comes to singing." So she's a singer. How do you pick yourself up after a bad performance? So if you know you've really, yeah. you're, I'm the same. I know you are. Yeah. This is why I'm smiling because this is the best <laughs> question. How do you overcome? Uh, well, you just you just try and do better on the next gig. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, you know, I'll come off stage thinking, oh, that was absolutely rubbish. What are you doing? You know, and and like people are like, what? Yeah. That's amazing. You know, sometimes sometimes you can be overcritical. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think it's more to do with me really. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't know. I guess it's the <laughs> it's the level that I kind of see myself at being and yeah. I don't feel like I've got there yet yeah. it's not a bad thing really do you know what I mean it's probably the perfectionist I think a lot of creatives have that perfectionist yeah. in them which is it's good but even like thinking about like if you're on a gig and I know for me sometimes I'm mid gig mid song and my head goes yeah. and it's like oh no and all you're seeing is like you're hearing the voice of like yeah you really shouldn't have done that that's really bad yeah. Da -da -da. Yeah. and it's like having to silence that voice is mm. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? Midway it is through. hard. It is hard. But you've just got to push through it. Yeah. You've just got to push through it because if you let those kind of, you know, things get to you, then you're just going to be a bag of nerves every time you, you get on the stage. Yeah. So, you know, you just take, take a deep breath, just go and do it all over again. But try and do it better next yeah, time. That's true, isn't it? I love it. Mm -hmm. love it. Cool. Right, we've got another question. This is a, a question that says, I'm an upcoming musician looking for an apprenticeship, can't speak. How do I go about making the contacts and getting on board with a company? So I know for you, obviously you work with a lot of management companies and things, people like that. You know, how do they make that step? I know it takes time and recommendation and all that kind of stuff you talked about, but is there any tips on how to do that? It is difficult, you know, when you're first starting out. I mean, you know, when I first started out, there was a lot of agencies that were out there, musical agencies, yeah. you know, and there was there was a lot of session based, you know, gigs. I mean like I was more in the pop industry, you know, and there was a lot of call for stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but obviously 
I joined a, an agency and you just you just have to sell yourself. Yeah. Make sure you get a really good CV together. Yeah. You know, get some take some really good photos. Yeah. Present yourself, you know, and 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 just kind of pitch yourself. This is what I do. Yeah. I'm available for this. And just pitch yourself to musical agents. And I think, you know, once you've got two or three bookings, you know, just network with the people that are around you, the other musicians that are on the gig with you. You know, you do a good job, they'll remember you and yeah. they'll recommend you. You know, because I'm not, I'm, I don't really use agents that much now, if, if at all. Yeah. Because, you know, over time, people begin to know who you are and, you know, Names again, like recommendations, you know. Huge and important, isn't it? It's so massive. Good important to get right we've got a couple I'm trying to get through as many because we yeah. literally have for like 10 minutes so wow. um I know the time's just gone so quick so um James has Facebooked in um hi James hope you're okay um also he has a few questions so how important would you say it is to live in London to be a successful to be successful professional session musician um he's also got any advice for a fellow session guitarist on getting the call for your first big gig which we kind of just looked at and there's, yeah, there's like an opinion on agencies, so that was absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I suppose the first thing about London, because we've had this discussion, yeah. we have had this. I think it's not the be all and end all. Mm. I don't live in London, no. you know what I mean? But, you know, a lot of my work is in London, you know, but you've got, you've got to be able to, if, if you get a call to do a session in London, you've got to be able to, uh, you've got to know that I've got somewhere to stay. Yeah. for instance, you know, and, and be available, yeah. you know. It's pointless accepting uh, a, a two weeks' worth of work, you know, and, and not being able to get to London, yeah. you know. You've got to think, right, am I going to drive backwards and forwards? How am I going to get there? How yeah. am I going to transport my gear? Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things you've got to think stuff, about. yeah. Yeah, and you've got to think, well, I've got to fund myself for these next two weeks. Have I got enough money to do that? He says, is it, have I got a friend that I can just cotch with mm. for two weeks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Do you know what I mean? Because you're not, you're not going to be able to get any money until after that two-week period is over, and then you'll probably have to wait another two, three weeks before you get your check. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's the practical things you've got to think about. Yeah. you got to think, I've got to eat, I've got to park my car. I've got to pay That's congestion charge. It's expensive, so <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of things. But I mean, like, I I chose not to go to London because I just uh, I I didn't really feel I needed to. You're a brummie at heart. I'm a brummie. <laughs> Um, but it's not the be all and end all. No. It's great because there's a there's a big music scene in London, and I can see why people say that's you know that's an option. And and yes, if you can do it, but you know I think if you the, the longer you can kind of network down there and be involved in things without actually making that commitment, you know, I would say do, you know, take the time because it's expensive to live yeah. in London. It is, yeah. yeah. I've been there, done that, and yes, definitely expensive, but mm -hmm. it's cool. Okay, we've got, I literally probably have time for one more question, so, and there's so many that we haven't answered, so we'll have to tweet back in and, and let people know. So, uh, when Paul gets nervous, um, which he must, I can't read this, uh, do sometimes, does he have any strategies to deal with this Especially if like you're kind of meeting either famous people or you're going on stage and it's a huge kind of thing. How do you how do you deal with that, really, basically? Yeah, nerves. I I, always, I I mainly get nervous in small. Really? Yeah, I don't. You mean like, like today? Like today? <laughs> yeah. I, I never slept all night last night. <laughs> No, well, I mean, like, you know, I could play on a massive stage for like thirty thousand people, for instance, yeah. and that doesn't freak me out. At but in all. the beginning. What was it like? Because like, you've got to have felt some nerves in the beginning. Um, I'm only nervous if I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. If I haven't practiced properly, if I've if I'm not quite sure of the song. Yeah. That's when I get nervous because I don't want to mess up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But when I'm confident in my game and I know what I'm doing, then it's just about performing. Then it's just about playing. I love you this. know. And you know, I mean, like, if I do get nervous, I'll, I'll just go outside and just scream, <laughs> just shout, just let it out, you know. Scary man outside a gig. <laughs> yeah, just, just find, just find a little quiet time for yourself, yeah. and you know, just just breathe and just like relax. Awesome. You know, take some time out, and then you you're only nervous because you, you don't know what you're doing sometimes, yeah. or you just. But remember, you've got to think. Well, these people are coming to see me. Do you know what I mean? They pay their money, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's true. You know, so there's nothing to be scared about. I love that. You know. That's cool. Okay. They want you to do well. 
Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Okay, so that's kind of all we've got time for, which is like oh, wow. gone so quick. Yeah. It has. So um, just to kind of finish off, is there anything else that you would like to say to anyone before, like as in, quick tip <laughs> or anything before they go? Just that, just to recap, I suppose we've got. I know we said about knowing your craft, knowing yeah. your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, go on, you. Just be who you are. Yeah. Just be who you are. I can't stress it enough. You know, yeah. you can only be the best person that you can be. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, do the networking thing, and 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 just find out as much as you can about your niche, whether it's fashion, yeah. whether it's acting, whether it's music, whatever. Yeah. You know, just just try and be the best at what you can do. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Guys, thank you so, so much for taking the time. This has been awesome, and thank you, by the way. Um, like, I feel so inspired. This is wicked. So I hope it's been insightful for you. I hope you've gained something from it. You know, just hearing the stories of what it's like to be a professional musician in the music industry, what it's like to be an artist. You know, this is the time that you can set these goals, guys. You know, we talked about it in the last couple of weeks. The other videos will be coming out soon, so you can learn how to goal set, how to be really clear about what you want to achieve and know that it can be achievable and that's one thing you know if you take that away today that you can realize that you know small beginnings doesn't mean that you can't have big dreams you know and they can't become reality and that's so important so thank you so much um once again thank you to Warsaw Studio School for having us here it's been absolutely amazing guys remember again get yourself onto imagination.com now this is the time that all the industry professionals are actually going to be looking at your stuff and really checking out who you are so get your stuff on there get your soundcloud bites on there if you're an artist get your products on there ready to go because we are going to get ready for stage two where you can actually sell your stuff and earn money which is what we all want to do so thank you once again we are here next week with claire turner marshall she's going to be talking to you about how to get money basically that's the thing it, she is an absolute amazing expert on finance how to raise finance how to you know really generate major streams of income and she she hands up she's probably been the most influential person in my life in regards to generating an income from doing what i love 24 7 so she's going to be amazing for you to speak to so spread the word make sure people tune in and guys we look forward to seeing you next week on emergination thank you